Welcome to The Warp. I'm Jack Rita. Today I'm going to talk to you about some behind-the-scenes trivia about the design and development of Cosmic Dominion, the fifth expansion for Cosmic Encounter. To fully understand what brought this expansion about, you need to go back to Cosmic Storm, the fourth expansion. This was the first expansion that didn't have Kevin Wilson at the helm. It was a bit of a mixed bag. There's enough in that expansion for me to make it worth having. I like some of the aliens. While I find a few to be on the redundant side, there's nothing technically wrong with them. I have removed Brute and Grumpus from my set, so they'll never get played. I do also like space stations a lot. I just wish there were more of them in the expansion. Ten doesn't really begin to cut it in a game that prides itself on the sheer volume of variable player powers and similar variants in mechanic. So the fan reaction to Storm was a constant factor on what we did in Dominion. Possibly part of what motivated Fantasy Flight to okay having fans essentially design their own expansion. Kind of a wild and crazy concept. This was also spearheaded by two of the original designers for Cosmic Encounter, Bill Eberly and Peter Olatka. They've always tried to keep their fingers on the pulse of the CE community at large. And I believe that they see it as a burgeoning new community which posts a lot on Facebook and Instagram, and the hardcore longtime fan base, which is quite active on Board Game Geek. Newer players didn't complain quite as much about Storm, but the veterans had little to say that was nice. So Peter and Bill got Fantasy Flight to let the fans steer the content. But in the early days of this expansion, Peter and Bill were still definitely at the helm. And they were attempting to bring a mix of classic aliens from the olden days, some new aliens that they'd been cooking up, and the best of the fan homebrews. The majority of this development took place on Facebook, which is not really the ideal medium for board game development. They did what they could, but in my opinion, things were moving much faster than they should have been moving, as it didn't seem to me that very much actual playtesting was taking place. Rather than let every fan be a cook in the kitchen, it was decided that a council of three superfans would be the generals. Two fairly obvious choices were me, the guy who runs the warp and self-proclaimed number one fan of Cosmic Encounter, and Bill Martinson, a widely acknowledged walking encyclopedia of Cosmic. These two alpha personalities would be joined by Jefferson Crow, a guy who will be the first to admit is not a designer, but has a nice track record of being rational. His opinions were frequently sound, and he never got terribly riled up about anything. He was also a frequent kibitzer on both Facebook and BoardGameGeek, and I think Peter and Bill felt would help bridge those two communities' viewpoints and wants. The three of us began communicating largely via email, trying to aggregate all of the current development and ideas that were being bandied about. There was a lot. Bill and I also had quite a large catalog of homebrewed materials in varying stages of development, some going back decades. However, we were both determined to not just make this the Bill and Jack expansion. We wanted to include the best ideas from across the cosmos, as we'd say. We also recognized that there were some excellent raw ideas that, while not published ready, definitely had the seeds of some really innovative ideas in them, and we wanted to explore that. However, we only had so much time before we had to deliver. My idea of the reward deck started in the 1990s when I was making my first homemade set of Cosmic Encounter using a lot of wild new card ideas from the internet and ones that I thought up on my own. It made a Cosmic deck that was ridiculously large. This screwed up the card distribution to a ludicrous degree, and I realized that moving all of the cuckoo stuff to its own deck was the solution. And I figured accessing it through rewards was a good way to temper access to these cards. But that first reward deck was composed of some very powerful cards and a few duds to make it just a little risky to go there. Kevin Wilson did a great job with the contents of the first reward deck in Cosmic Incursion. It had kickers for the first time, some powerful other cards, something new in the form of rifts, and the negative attack cards, which few people would want to acquire. But part of me was longing for a couple more cards in that deck with serious bang, and I wasn't alone. We started by using the distribution of Incursion's reward deck as our guide for the distribution of the new deck. This let us know how many of one type of card we should aim for versus a different type. Ultimately, we bent it a little, but I'm very pleased with the end result. We definitely wanted to include some new types of cards, in addition to new effects on old cards, like kickers that do more than just multiply, and rifts that do more than just free or eliminate ships. 
Bill was great at looking at the number usage and forging into new territories. For example, on the rifts, the ones in incursion were valued at three, four, and five. So he suggested that rifts with different effects have different numbers, like the one and two. Similarly, deciding on the values for the Intimidate cards, all of which end in nine, which is a rare digit in the game. The evolution of the Intimidate was kind of interesting. It started off as a defend card, a sort of companion card to the attack card, but it could only be used by the defense, which posed complications. Bill took it a step further with something called a reflect card, which could be used by either main player, but the community began to wonder if it was unique enough. It then turned into something called an ultimatum card, which you had to announce that you were playing. The idea being it would be a negotiate if the opposing side played a negotiate, otherwise it would be a high attack value. This was an interesting thing to add into an encounter card, but it still quite wasn't there. Then we agreed on making it a card anyone could play, main player, allies, or even potential allies. And the main players would decide if they wanted to reveal their own encounter card or the one played by one of their allies. Intimidates were born. There was some back and forth on the retreat card. I loved having a new encounter card type, since Intimidate was technically either an attack or negotiate. But it took a long time to decide on just how many retreats to include. Some playtesters wanted more. Some felt it was an auto-loss encounter card, or really just a negotiate card with a different form of compensation. And we had a few special negotiates in there already, why have so many more? I believe two was the right number. Jefferson was often the voice of reason on where to settle on any issue. The other card that went through a few iterations was a variable attack card. I wanted to find another use for the hazard symbols on the destiny cards, especially since they're hard to see. Players needed an excuse to be on the lookout for them. The end result on the reward deck was definitely on the powerhouse side. Some described it as a little too hot. But it's ultimately designed to be combined with the incursion deck, which might be a little too cool. So mixed together, it's a very nice reward deck, and I love it. In the meantime, we had aliens to work on. Initially, we looked at the aliens that were already in the development cycle. There was an alien called Mart, which was very much a take on Hertz, as yet unpublished, though not one of the unpublished aliens that people were clamoring to see. There was Guardian, Grifter, Joker, and Nightmare, which are actually different from the ones that were published in Dominion and Eons, and some others. I knew that playtesting aliens was going to be a critical part of the development and design strategy. I started by printing out some of the homebrews that looked most promising and then scheduled some games with different groups I played Cosmic with. This definitely helped to find out which aliens were most unique, interesting, and fun to play, but also which ones just didn't work. I encouraged other members of the CE community to do the same, and we used what feedback we did manage to collect. We combed over everyone's top 10 homebrew lists or their own recommended sheets of aliens and just about everything on the warp to see what was good, interesting, or unique. Eventually, we published some blocks of alien contenders on BoardGameGeek where we felt the most useful feedback was being given, though we did solicit comments on Facebook as well. We wanted people to vote on the aliens they liked best and to comment on what they liked or didn't like about them. Some discussions got heated, but it was still very useful data. Bill and Jefferson and I were pretty sure that the two aliens by Peter's granddaughters were in this set no matter what, so we set out to make sure the effects were clear and interesting. Bride actually started out as gown, but we had a hard time with the concept of a space dress that floated around marrying aliens. Making it into Bride was the easy part. The original effects that we settled on from that point were perfectly adequate, but it was actually the beta testers that insisted Bride be able to divorce a player and take half their cards. At first I thought it would be too much going on, but we just couldn't resist how great and thematic an idea it was. After voting, we used the popularity of Aliens to help drive the list of 30 contenders, but the three of us wanted to make sure that we had a very diverse group of Aliens that would appeal to the widest range of players out there. So we ended up bumping out a couple of Aliens that had more votes in favor of some that had fewer simply because of how innovative their effects were. Finally, here's some trivia about the art in Cosmic Dominion. Because of the early development that took place on Facebook, there was a list of alien art sent out to Fantasy Flight well before we were brought into the development process. But we really knew nothing about it. Imagine our surprise when a big art order came in and we saw artwork for Mart, Guardian, Nightmare, Klutz, Dragon, Delegator, among others. None of these aliens were part of Dominion at this point. We had a list of 30 aliens in the running for Dominion, and now we had to match up the art that was given to us. For a little while, we scratched our heads, uh, but then we gave it our best shot. I think just about everything worked out, with the possible exception of Ace. That art just doesn't make sense. It was originally for the alien Mart, a storefront alien. Reactor's art was originally meant for Nightmare. 
Muckraker was supposed to be demagogue. Usurper was delegator. Pickpocket was really klutz. Explorer was meant to be dragon. Love's art was created for guardian. Alchemist was for the order or the cult. A completely different alien was going to be in Dominion, but the art snafu made us consider swapping it out for Alchemist. Bride's art was supposed to be Lloyd. Daredevil was actually rejected swindler art, so it must have been lying around since Cosmic Storm. Quartermaster was for an alien called Glitch. Host was going to be Pretender. Lizard was Rack. Finally, Mirage was going to be the original Mesmer. We had a few more outstanding art commissions, so we tried to get a new pirate with the parrot joke. But the art staff really liked pirate. We planned to make the pterodactyl into Ace, and then we were going to use Engineer's art for Ace and use the Mart alien as Engineer. But again, the art department loved their Engineer for Engineer, so we relented. That's it for this episode of The Warp. Starting in 2019, I'm going to try making a weekly video series of short videos covering a lot of topics like highlights of an expansion, history and trivia, top tens, and more. Even some live video from Escape Velocity this summer at the Galactic Championship. So, hope to see you there.